What's up guys, welcome back to Classic Octane. I am Taylor. So it's been about a week or so since I've made a video, but uh, that doesn't mean I haven't been busy. So we've uh, got a couple of new tools in the shop. I'm really excited to show you guys. We've also done some work outside for kind of future plans. And uh, let me just fill you in on all the things we've been doing over the last week or so. So the first two things I'm gonna show you are gonna be this. This is a uh, belt sander. I think it's like a two by, I don't know, maybe 36 belt. Uh, I've got this and another thousand pound uh, motorcycle lift, uh, air powered. That one is a handy brand, uh, so it's a, a good quality lift. Uh, I picked that up, this, and a set of McGuni carbs up from an estate sale for 165 bucks total for all of it, which is a steal, because those are like $1,200 lifts. So I'm super excited about that, but what that has uh, kind of shined a light on is the fact that this kind of back third of the garage it's kind of unusable right now, uh, just because of the amount of bikes I have stored in here. So basically what I need to do is figure out a better storage solution for all of these bikes. Um, some of them are future projects, some of them are sold already, some of them are done. Uh, so there's kind of a mix and I don't want to just park these outside. I don't want to park them even outside just in like a you know temporary kind of tent garage. I really want them to be in a um, at least a weather sealed. It doesn't have to be a climate controlled environment, but um, what I'm thinking is probably getting a 20-foot uh, storage container, and I think I've mentioned that before in the past. So wanting to get that storage container led me down this path of where am I going to put it? So let me show you what uh, I spent a couple of days last week doing. So hopefully you guys will be able to kind of see out of this window over here. But this is uh, the side of my house. So those of you who have kind of been around the channel for the last couple of months know that I bought this house uh, earlier this year. Uh, with the intent on clearing this land and building a big shop at some point in the future. Uh, we don't necessarily have the need or the funds to kind of go that route just yet. But what I did is the early part of last week, I just got out there and went crazy with a chainsaw and a machete and I cut down all of the shrubs and the light uh, bushes and everything. I'll throw a clip right now of what this looked like before. So as you can see from that, um, you know, we've done a ton of work. And basically what I wanted to do is figure out where exactly the future shop is going to go. Uh, what I would love to do is like a 60 by 40 shop. Um, and I want to figure out where that's going to go so that when I buy this shipping container in the not too distant future, I can kind of put it somewhere that uh, is close to the future shop, uh, but not in the way because I don't want to have to move it later. So I kind of needed to know the layout of the land uh, in order to figure that out. So I'm gonna start kind of looking for a quality used uh, shipping container that we can come have delivered, stuck back in the woods over there, and we can uh, you know fill it up with a bunch of motorcycles. So One more thing I wanna share with you guys that I picked up last week uh, is I found this ad on Facebook Marketplace for kind of a, a garage full of motorcycle parts, and the person was moving uh, pretty quickly and kind of needed to just get stuff gone. Uh, so I went there and I was able to pick up a newer uh, Triumph tank, some kind of random chrome gas tank that I think is just gonna look cool on a shelf. A, uh, C, I believe this is a 550 tank. I think this, the 750s are a little bit more square. I've compared it to my other 550 tank. So CB550 tank in uh, pretty decent shape. A set of carbs for a 550 and then two sets of carbs for a 750 and a whole bucket full of uh, kind of other miscellaneous Honda parts. Uh, so I was able to pick all of that up for a really good deal. Uh, so I kind of wanted to show you guys that. I will be doing some uh, rebuilds and stuff on these carbs. Uh, this set of carbs right here is probably what I will do that uh, kind of widely requested step-by-step -step carb uh, rebuild video on. So we will totally disassemble these um, and bring them back all the way to like new condition as far as we can. I can already tell by looking at them. There is uh, one, two, three, four, at least four different kinds of hardware holding these bowls on. So I expect we'll find some interesting, uh, you know, things and hopefully we can bring these back to life. But I wanted to kind of show you guys that quick score. Now we'll move on to the most exciting addition to the shop. So this is my brand new um, Weekend Warrior uh, vapor blasting cabinet from a company called Vapor Honing Technologies. Uh, they are based in, I believe, North Carolina, North or South Carolina, 100% uh, American-made product, um, and I'm very, very excited to uh, have it in the shop. So if you're not familiar with what these do, think of it as kind of a, it's similar to like a dry blasting cabinet, something that you would uh, get to, you know, kind of blast whatever rust off of parts, 
but this is designed for a kind of OE, uh, nice satin finish on uh, like aluminum parts. Think of motorcycle engine components, carburetors, that kind of stuff. So instead of just a dry media, it actually uses a, uh, what they call a slurry of uh, water in like a very fine glass bead. Uh, and then you throw some air, compressed air behind it and it is incredible so far. So I wanted to get it set up, get kind of comfortable with it over the last couple of days before I showed it to you guys so that I can, uh, you know, really talk kind of intelligently about how it works, uh, that what I've learned of kind of setting it up. And then if you guys want to go down the path of, you know, maybe getting one of these for your own shop, uh, hopefully this video will kind of help you get down that path. But this is uh, called their Weekend Warrior. So they basically have some kind of smaller hobby machines. They have one that just goes on top of your bench. Uh, that you can use and that's um, you know a decent price if you kind of use it maybe once a month something like that uh, then they step up to some machines like this uh, which is for somebody like me who's going to be using this multiple times a week probably you know 10 12 hours a week I would say hopefully more than that um, and then it's going to get a lot of use out of the machine needs the larger capacity has the uh, you know large air compressor that's required to kind of uh, push one of these machines uh, that's what this is for and then they go all the way up to like crazy industrial level like stainless 10 foot tall uh, machines that uh, you know we don't need uh, anything like that for for my shop so this is their good kind of mid-range machine let me show you a little bit about how it works so you open this side door over here this is a stainless side door and then the majority of the machine is this like kind of polymer rubbery plastic kind of material uh, it's a huge opening. I think this is like 36 inches by 30 by you know, like 28, something like that. So you can fit some big stuff in here, wheels, um, you know, whatever you need to do. 90% of what I'm going to be doing is little carburetor bodies and stuff. But uh, you can see all this white stuff in here is the glass bead because I have been using the machine. Uh, under this little tray down here is the uh, water and kind of glass bead mixture uh, and the pump that actually pumps that through this hose. So the clear hose is where all the glass and water comes through. This red hose is where the compressed air comes in. And it has a foot pedal down there that starts um, and kind of activates everything. It does have this, which is for a fresh water uh, to rinse off your parts, rinse off the inside of the machine, that kind of stuff. And then up on the top there, there is a little kind of spray nozzle that you can set to uh, spray the inside of uh, what I'm gonna call the windshield and clean off some of that debris so you can see a little bit better. So this is the part of the machine that I've kind of set up myself. Um, in order to save cost, these machines are what uh, is referred to as an open loop system. So what that means is it's really designed to be connected to like a garden hose for a fresh water source. And then this top valve here is a drain that's designed to be kind of drained off you know, into a, a, you know, a sink or into a ground thing, or, you know, it's just water and a little bit of glass bead. So if I'm not mistaken, you could probably just pour it out onto the ground. Um, and their higher end systems, they have the closed loop system, which has this huge kind of a water filtration system that uh, kind of bleeds off the excess water, filters any contaminants out of it, and then provides it back as fresh water. Those were significantly out of my budget. So what I've kind of come up with is my own closed loop system because I don't have a water source in my shop. I also don't have a great drain in my shop. So I've got myself one of these five gallon buckets. Inside of the bucket is a pump. It was actually the pump that I was gonna use for my DIY vapor blasting cabinet. And I'll get into why I kind of uh, not gave up on that project, but kind of went a different direction. Uh, but it's basically just a Harbor Freight kind of uh, maybe $70, $80 uh, pump that I use to pump fresh water out of this bucket into the machine. That's uh, for my rinse nozzle and for the windshield sprayer. And then it's set up right here to easily just drain the fresh water back into the bucket after I'm done. So basically after I'm done blasting, I let the machine sit for maybe 10 or 15 minutes, let all of that glass beads settle to the bottom of the machine, open this valve, get you know 90%, 95% of the fresh water, uh, back into this bucket and then I'm ready to blast again. So it's a way for me to just kind of create my own closed loop system without having to, uh, you know, put a bunch of money into their um, kind of extra system that they offer. Uh, downsides of it is technically there is some glass bead and contaminants in that water. So when I'm spraying off my parts, it's not perfectly fresh water I'm spraying off with. Uh, but so far it doesn't seem to really make all that much of a difference. 
Uh, so I think this is gonna work well. I'm probably gonna upgrade to like a 15 gallon, uh, like maybe a water drum, uh, just so I can have kind of a larger capacity of fresh water. Uh, Cause this, if I'm not watching it, it can run the bucket dry if I don't have that valve open. So this is a uh, kind of part of the system that will uh, evolve over time as we continue to use it. But so far I've been uh, very happy with, uh, with this setup. Okay, now I wanna kind of show you guys the results we're getting here, but uh, a really important thing I want to note is your blasting media makes a huge difference, which of course that kind of makes sense, but I didn't realize how big of a difference the blasting media can really make um, when you're going from one glass bead to another glass bead. And this is how I learned that lesson. So the carburetor on the left here, I blasted in the machine when I first got it, and I was using some cheap uh, Harbor Freight what they quote is an 80 grit glass bead. And I was getting good results as far as cleaning, but this is not at all the kind of finish that I expected to get out of the machine. This is very similar to what you'd get in a traditional dry blasting cabinet. So it cut through a lot of the gunk, but it doesn't look great. So I started to look and do a little bit more research and I figured out, okay, you really need to invest in a quality media and quality glass bead is not rated in grit. It's rated in a sieve rating uh, amongst a couple of other things. So what I decided to do is totally rinse out and get rid of the garbage uh, Harbor Freight media. And I went to Granger and I got a quality glass uh, bead. Let me show you exactly what I got. So this is the glass bead I got from Granger right here. And the important bit is down here on the bottom left. And that is that sieve rating. So this is a 170 to 325 US sieve. So what that is, is the actual consistency in the, the size of bead. And, uh, and that made all of the difference. So this carburetor on the right is the first one I did with the new glass bead. And that is the results we are looking for. So you can see it still keeps, I mean this top isn't in great condition, but it still keeps the nice polish all of these bolt heads are like nice and polished. The brass parts all come back to life, but aren't all dull and kind of, uh, you know, pitted like they were on this setup. So you can see this is why you invest in a vapor blasting cabinet is because you want the, you know, carbs to come back to life. I want them to look like new. Um, and that's what we're finally getting now. Look, you should get a little bit of powder coming out. So I've been going ham on just, vapor blasting a bunch of stuff. Here's another good kind of side-by-side -side comparison. This left side was done with the old media, right side was done with the new media. And you can see how it has this nice satin finish, it's nice and clean. And this is just kind of a, a rough, you know, almost dusty looking matte finish. And it's just not what we are looking for. This would probably work well if you were gonna paint it afterwards. Uh, but if we wanna keep it raw aluminum, you know, this is really what we're, we're looking for. And I'll show you one last time of a true side-by-side and this is uh, some of the carbs I picked up. So this is the carb body from a CB750 in its kind of original condition I just pulled out. And then this is the exact same set of carbs, but this side's vapor blasted, obviously. So you can see, I mean, that's, that's pretty insane. And it's relatively time consuming. I'll show you guys the machine in action. Uh, it doesn't take a lot to actually get the you know finish you want, but it's all the little nooks and crannies and stuff is what uh, makes it take some time. But the results I think speak for themselves. I mean, you could clean this up in the ultrasonic cleaner and get these carbs to run well, but I mean, to have them look basically OE with that nice satin finish and all the brass, I mean, you know, like I said three times already, this is why you invest in a vapor blasting cabinet is because these are the kind of results you want. So I want to show you guys this in action. Uh, hopefully you'll be able to continue to kind of see it working. Um, you know, some of the material does splash up on this screen, so it, it may become a little bit hard to see. Uh, and also my air compressor is going to kick on and be kind of loud. Um, so I'll probably switch to, you know, maybe a little bit of music or something uh, just so you're not sitting here listening to a loud uh, air compressor running. But we are going to blast this carb body, the one I just showed you. So let me get you a nice close up of what it looks like going into the machine. So that's what we're going to start with. Let's get to work.
keep this as one long clip. This is what we're working with now. Isn't that insane? There's some pitting in here. Uh, this is nice and clean. It's just, you know, the aluminum is kind of pitted. So it's clean. It just doesn't look that great. But luckily that's inside the bowl. You can see the body. I mean, short of like the little just heavily kind of corroded and, you know, rusted area in the corner of these, you might have to hit with, you know, something more aggressive or by hand. But the beauty of this machine is because it is so gentle, it's actually safe on rubber, on brass, uh, coarse aluminum, you know, any of that kind of stuff. So if plastics, so if you have little, you know, a plastic uh, choke, you know, lever on your cars, you can blast right on that. It will clean the plastic up without tearing it away. And there's no way you're doing that with a dry blasting cabinet. So I think the results kind of speak for themselves. And you saw that took probably, you know, two or three minutes, but this is by no means done because I got to go in here and make sure I don't miss any of these little kind of tiny corners and that kind of stuff. So from what I've found, you really need to blast it as best you can, clean it, you know, spray it off with air, pull it out in the shop and look around and take note of any spots you missed. Put it back in the machine, blast it a second time. But I could not be happier with uh, the results we're getting out of this thing. Bring the car back over here and put it next to its partner. And now they look the same. So this tool is going to be, um, you know, widely used for me and my own personal projects. Um, but what I honestly want to do is I'm going to start offering those carburetor rebuild services, like I mentioned to you guys before. So I will make the video on how to do it. Um, because if you're a DIY guy and you want to take it on and you want to try and rebuild your own carbs, like I'm all for it. Uh, but for any of those people out there that, um, you know, decide that, okay, it's maybe a little bit too much. There's a little bit too many, you know, kind of tiny parts and pieces and stuff and would rather send it to somebody else. I do want to offer carburetor rebuilds as a service. Part of that service will be an option to have your carbs vapor blasted. Um, you're going to want to totally disassemble the carbs to vapor blast them properly. Uh, and if we're already going to have them totally disassembled to rebuild them, you know, it's not it's not a huge difference to just opt into having them vapor blasted. It's going to be, you know, kind of a flat fee. I'll determine exactly what that flat fee is, um, but it won't be too bad um, because I would I would rather people opt into it because the end result it just kind of speaks for itself as far as how much nicer everything looks. Um, so I thought about having every one of my rebuilds you know, include this process, but I think that might kind of price people out of wanting to do it. So uh, I am going to have it as an option for carburetor rebuilds. I'm also going to just open it up for an option of if you guys have parts, if you're rebuilding a, you know, CB550 motor and you want to send me the parts to Vapor Blast, maybe you don't have a place local to you. This process is, is somewhat new and not kind of widely available in a lot of places. Um, I don't even know if there's another place in Austin that does it. If they, if there is, they don't really do a great job advertising it. Um, so I want to kind of open it up to you guys. It's probably going to be uh, just an hourly rate, and it's something we're going to have to work on one-on-one uh, -on -one to kind of figure out, okay, your project and the results you're looking for, how long is that going to take, you know, times whatever dollar uh, hourly rate. So if you guys have some stuff you want vapor blasted, shoot me an email, classicoctane.com, and I will kind of give you a quote on what that's going to look like to get done. Um, but I am ecstatic about uh, the results we're getting so far. Um, you know, that's, that machine is going to kind of up our restorations and everything to the next level, and that's exactly why I decided to kind of jump in and, and make that investment. I want to give a quick shout out to uh, one of you guys who made me this sign. Kind of reached out and said, hey, send me a PNG. I want to make you a sign. So I was like, okay, cool. And I, I was blown away when it actually came in because it's it's so cool. It's like laser cut and then like powder coated white and then put onto this uh, black background. It is metal, uh, super high quality sign. So uh, because the craftsmanship is so good, I do want to shout this guy out. I will throw a link to his website in the description below. I believe it's called steelrootsdecor.com. Uh, based here in the States, and uh, it's an incredible sign, so want to shout him out and give him props for uh, for some great quality work. I uh, haven't figured out where its final home is going to be, that's why it's kind of just laying on the, the workbench here, but uh, I'm looking forward to getting this thing up on the wall 
and uh, been looking at it for a long time to come. So just wanted to give them a quick shout out because uh, you know people who support me, I want to help uh, you know kind of return the favor and support them. So if you need any kind of custom signs or anything, go check this guy out. Well, that's going to do it for this video, guys. I have a feeling this one felt a little commercial-like. Uh, I paid for this machine. They didn't give it to me for free or anything. So um, this is like an honest review of you know this is the results I'm getting out of this particular machine. If you guys want to go with a different brand or something else, like by all means, uh, go for it. But uh, this is the one that I now have uh, kind of hands-on experience with and can kind of stand behind. Um, so far, you know, I've only had it for a week or so, uh, but it seems to be pretty good quality, and I think it's going to last for a long time. You guys will be the first to know if uh, that ends up not being the case. So, I know some of you are going to be a little upset that I didn't go the DIY route, and my thought process behind that is if I'm going to offer this as a service, not only for um, the option on carburetor rebuilds, but also just for you know an hourly rate for parts to be blasted by themselves, I want to have extreme confidence in the you know, quality and reliability and repeatability of the process. And I just wasn't confident that I was going to be able to get those kinds of results from a DIY machine. I think a DIY machine will probably work well if you're just the guy that is building one bike a year for fun, you know, father-son project, whatever it may be, and you just want to blast some parts. Uh, but if you're going to, you know, sell it as a service, you know, you kind of need to opt into this professional level equipment. Uh, so that I can guarantee the results. You know, I don't want to get a set of carbs and somebody's like, yeah, I want to go ahead and opt into vapor blasting. And then I'm over here trying to piece together a machine that's held together with, you know, duct tape and, and sheet metal screws and, you know, aluminum foil. Uh, you know, I want to make sure I can offer a good product. And that's just kind of me personally is, is, is my business now. Um, so what I learned from this machine um, if there's still enough interest, I may very well still make a DIY machine based on what we know now, uh, and we can try and get some good results out of a, out of a DIY setup. I just, um, you know, without having a lot of experience with the process, I wasn't confident in being able to build a machine from scratch. So now that I'm going to be a lot more familiar with it, you know, that might lead us down a path of being able to create a, uh, a passable DIY machine. And, uh, of course, I'll, you know, have that step-by-step -step on the channel and show you guys how to do it. Um, two more things before I go, and I know I've rambled a little bit on this video. Uh, we are jumping back on this bike. I now have the seat cover in, I have the tires in, um, a couple of other parts we've been waiting on. So we're going to knock this bike out and get it totally done here um, this week. I also have something very exciting outside on my trailer uh, that I think is going to make a really cool Will It Run Wednesday for you guys. So I'm going to get to work on that. I may actually work on that uh, tonight. I have a buddy coming over. Um, probably help me with that because it's uh, it's a lot bigger than what we've uh, been working on in the past so be on the lookout for that and uh, appreciate you guys watching let me know if you have any questions about this process carb rebuilds whatever else and uh, I'll see you guys in the next video